What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report, as well as my buddy, Game Time Brian. And I know I, I thought Brian was going to be happier today because the temperatures warmed up. Um, I thought for sure he'd be ecstatic, but you know, he ended up hitting me up earlier today and said, man, we got to do a video today. And he sounded like he was mad as hell. He literally sound like he's ready to go postal. Brian, have you calmed down yes. any? Listen, man, we know where we're going with this. No, I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all, Mark. Um, it's kind of what I was thinking, but I'm not happy, man. Uh, I know where you want to go. I know where I want to go. And I just <laughs> need to get my pound of flesh at this point. We're not getting, okay. So I, I'm assuming you saw the same thing I did. From exactly. Brian Brodus, who, yes. you know, I, I almost felt like Brian Brodus is putting his career on the line, speaking out the way that he did. You know, basically, you saw, he, uh, go ahead. If you saw, he sat there and thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And then he just couldn't take any more. He just had um, to go out with it. You know, and you could touch on it, um, but... um and you could touch on all, I mean, all the bases, and then I'll give I mean, you my he basically opinion. he basically said, "Listen, Jerry Jones is eighty some years old. He's turned the the day to day operations and basically turned the team over to Stephen Jones. Now, you remember Stephen Jones saying, I, I want to say it was the beginning of last off season or maybe the year before, and he said, when Jerry's gone, we'll probably take less risk. And I was kind of like, what How risk much? are you taking? What what risk are you taking now? You ain't taking any risk. What the hell? Are you Less risk. What? Yeah, exactly. And you said that, and it was exactly what I was thinking. And, and it was funny because I was so – I did my video early this morning on the way to work. I couldn't upload it. and You know, I was having a bad Wi-Fi day for whatever reason mm -hmm. where I'm at. Is, it wasn't good today. But regardless, I uploaded mine, and then I turned – and you didn't see it yet because it had just uploaded. Then I saw your video, and I'm like, we're talking the same freaking thing. What are the you, odds you of know, that? You know, when I said that to myself, you know what I thought Crazy. about? Crazy. I remember, like, when the Bidwells, you know, maybe 30 years or so ago with the Bidwells, there were certain teams that just – they were okay. We're not taking any risks. We're not spending any money. We're okay with just taking the money from revenue sharing and have a profitable business. We don't mm -hmm. care about winning. And that's literally when I thought back to Stephen Jones saying that, you know, we're not going to take risks. I was just kind of taken aback and started feeling like the same teams that weren't trying to win a Super Bowl. They put a okay. product on the field. But here it is. You got Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones having Mike McCarthy going on, you know, no extension. He's a lame duck. And this is the same thing that you have literally done. We have killed Mike McCarthy the last three seasons. We this failed. shit ain't Mike McCarthy. No. When, you, when no. you unfold all the layers, this isn't Dak Prescott. This isn't Mike McCarthy. This is Stephen Jones. OK, this is w like what it is. And remember, we t we talked about this two years ago when I, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about you remember the whole um, I was telling you, why can't we just go all in like the Rams? Right. And what happened after th that Super Bowl? Right. The yeah, Rams Stephen it, Jones, mind. Stephen Jones said, we don't believe that's the way you build a team. And I was kind of like, they just won hey, the Super Bowl. What are you talking what, about? Mark? They're already back in the playoffs this year. So, so they've already went all in. We're in quote-unquote cap hell, mm -hmm. and you are the master of the cap. You know, because I've been dealing with a lot of people just chewing me out over the last day, basically saying, you're saying Dallas can do this. You're saying Dallas can do that. You're saying they can do this. They, they're already over the cap. We all know the cap is BS. Oh, we, we've been, you know, this, right? actually, New Orleans Saints, we're right? only 19 million over, you know, two years ago, I think it was, we were 26 or so. And that wasn't even one of the worst ones. That same year, New Orleans was like a 76. Yeah, and that's then we're over. Talking about oh well, we don't want to be like the Rams because we don't want to have that downfall. And then you're in cap hell. Well, oh. Stephen Jones, they've already recovered and made it to the playoffs, and nobody wanted to friggin' play them. 
and they probably would have beat your ass if they would have gotten by. Uh, you know, mm. so you bring know it, I mean? man, bring it. Well, this whole thing is, well, we don't want to be in cap hell. What's the one thing you do? You you brag about your your analytics okay. and your can, drafting. Can, can, oh, let's back up for a second here, okay? He may brag and act like he knows what the hell he's doing. This mother humper doesn't know shit. Would you would you make him your financial planner? Not at this would point. Would you say, hey, here's my life savings, Stephen Jones. You've done such a great job with the money of the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go ahead and let you do it. Do you think that this mother humper... If he, you know, Jerry said, you're out on your own, he would get a job with somebody as their money man? This has been going on for a while. Uh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. As much as everybody wants to talk about Dak Prescott's deal, take a look at every freaking deal that they do. It's screwed up. They, have, they, they end up doing these big, crazy-ass extensions with guys that are injured. Yeah, Michael they Gallup. Pay, you know yeah, now now the money, well, but here's, here's well yeah. we can save nine and a half million dollars by yeah. cutting Michael yeah. Gallup. Listen, you're not saving nine and a half. You're Over spreading here. it out. You're still paying almost fourteen million dollars over two years. You're still paying Zeke Elliott this season because you were the idiots that said we're going to sign a running back to a beyond record contract. After saying we're not going to reset the Bargaining market against themselves. Really? I mean, let's be honest. The whole Tony Pollard thing last year, oh, that was geez. the most I, – I told you when they did it. I told you when they did it that they, they did not have to franchise this, uh, this guy. No, it was didn't. a waste. They could have gotten it for eight mil or, make, or let him go. What did we really get you know, out of Tony You know Pollard? what the most ironic thing is right now is what happened to the running back market where nobody wanted to pay a running back – Right. You know, the whole yeah. Saquon situation, you know, Zeke Elliott getting cut and all that uh, Dalvin Cook. And the funny thing is, if you look back at football, it still revolves when it comes to playoffs with the running game. I it finally hit me. You know, I've always kind of known it, but then you get caught up, right? We all get caught up in the machine of the Dallas Cowboys. Ooh, mm -hmm. we go out and get Gilmore, and we, yeah, you know, we go out and get uh, Brandon Cooks. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is. You know, I was crying, Mark. I wanted them to go out and get Derrick Henry so oh, much shit. at the trade deadline. I didn't mm -hmm. want, I didn't want Trey Lance because why? It wasn't going to help us. It just but here's was a, not you know you help hold us. it. We know why they got Trey Lance Bar, uh, as a bargaining chip. As yeah, not, it's not even a bargaining chip. It's to go ahead and create more buzz. It's stirring shit up because you still have people right now. Well, let Dak Prescott go, man. We got Trey Lance and everything else. He creates a buzz. He cre How much media storm was there by trading for Trey Lance? Even though you paid more for him than anybody else, you blew that off Nobody throughout the water. Nobody was, right. Everybody was talking right. about a six-round pick. You give up a fourth, a fourth that we could really use this year. But what did it create? Speculation. Oh my God, this is, you know, leverage against Dak. You know, this is, right. you know, the Cowboys don't believe in it. All the talking shows just blow up. And, and I'm going to actually point out one other thing to you. And you're the betting guru here. <laughs> and this is where somebody had sent this to me, and it's like, man, this is true. That Vegas made about a billion dollars because the Cowboys lost in the playoffs. Yeah. I could I could see it. The line that was seven. all the Who, money was, was on the about. Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. And that a billion dollars passed hands. Um I'm not saying they were cheating, but just think about that for a second. Yeah, uh that that's actually scary to think about that, you know. Um it really is. I mean, we're it's becoming embarrassing at this point, Stephen Jones. I'm talking to you. Um, and shout out to Brian Broadus. Some people could go, well, Brian Broadus isn't the oh, end all be all. No. Listen, Brian Broadus has got a Super Bowl ring. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a lot more. That's more than what McClay has. Okay. I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. You know, he was hired by Green Bay, he's been in multiple organizations. Let's give Howie Roseman credit. The one thing he does. Is he at least acts. off season acquisitions, okay, and he's and he's good with the cap. Is mm -hmm. he a good drafter? No, 
I'm sorry, Eagles fans. Anybody could draft in the top ten. It's not outside of that, outside of the first well, round. The, you know, and see, this is the thing that they brought up on that show too, which it's kind of like in basketball. In basketball, if you're in middle of the road, you're stuck there because you're not good enough to win the championship, but you're not bad enough to be in that, you know, the, the, the lottery to try and get the guy that can get you there. And that's where we are because we keep having, you know, drafting later in the draft, you know, we, we find decent players, but we, you know, we, one it's, time, the times said, we've gotten generational exact science. No, it's yeah. not, it's but not. it's a lot better when you're in the top five to oh, draft, yeah. you know, Absolutely. to find a guy than it is when you're talking about 24. You know, we did great with Tyler Smith up in that range. Uh, we'll see about Mozzie, but that one seems to be kind of like, eh, I don't know what that one's going to be. Uh, yeah, I, I'm so confused with that, Mark. That's another whole show. It really but, is. But, uh, um, you know, they got cute. They got cute last year, okay? They got cute because everybody that was linked to the Cowboys, mm-hmm. Mozzie, and everybody else that they liked mm-hmm. has is not named to the all-rookie team. Uh, yeah, pretty much all the rumors that we heard, they were all not good players. You know, Steve Avila, remember we brought mm-hmm. him up? All rookie, the yeah. guard. You know, I mean, we were talking about the obvious, and they tried to get cute with it. And we were all mm-hmm. excited. We were like, wow, it's been since, you know, Russell, Maryland. Well, there's a reason. Yeah. I mean, obviously. You know, I'm not saying he's a bust, but we didn't get nothing out of him, and we ranked 32 out of 32 by minutes played, mm-hmm. production for and all that, of our That's runs. the scariest thing right there is if, if now you're getting a dud draft again, well, and okay. you're not and signing any free agents. Eggs in the draft. But, but, but here's, the, here's what I, I don't understand is why is it that they refuse to take a chance? One or two guys in free agency other than bottom basement guys. Well, now we're hearing whispers that they're going to be big players. I'm oh, telling bullshit. you right now, Mark, I went over the list yesterday. That's, sell, that's selling the hype. I now, understand. And if they're not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing a, I'll do a, a video every day burying them in. And it's I'm telling you, it's not just us. This is bigger this year than it has been. It's now. I think it's it's bordering on embarrassing. Um, That's it's what just I it. would think because it, it feels like to that point w- when you see Brian Brodus literally light him up like that. That was a surprise to me. I mean, because they're paying him, Mark. That's what I'm Dallas saying. Cowboys.com is paying him. That, and that's where him I'm cut. like, uh, are you yeah. risking your job right now? Well. It may be, but you know what? Thank you, Brian. You said what we needed to hear because it's only whispers. You know, we only know what we're being fed out of uh, the star, basically. You mm-hmm. know, they give us little drips they, and they give us, like I was saying Yeah, they give morning. us what they want us to yeah. think and well, believe. Well, like I was saying this morning, I was like, you know, they give us nothing. We're like in a desert, you know, thirsty, and then they give us a little cap full of water. We drink it. It was like, oh, my God, we feel so good. We were so excited to get – Friggin' Anthony Barr, because they starved this that whole offseason. All these other teams are doing good, and then finally they throw in an Anthony Barr like it was some. He was shot. He was a shot fighter at that point, but we didn't care. But that, that's what they always do. We is, got Anthony Barr. You know, it, you know, Stephon Gilmore played pretty good, and but when he was signed, what did you hear? You know, he was an MVP. Yeah. Oh yeah, my God! Yeah, he was yeah. defensive, defensive MVP. Look at oh yeah, Brandon yeah, yeah. Cooks. He gets a thousand yards everywhere. Yeah, but at some point you hit the wall and yes. you get old. And that was Don Terry Poe and Gerald McCoy's, the Clinton oh, Hot Hot Dixes. You know, I'm they, to get a nervous well, no, tick. you you you've heard you know that where they you, they're name players that you know. Yeah. And you think, okay, yeah, well, him coming to the Cowboys, you know, he played real good in Chicago and this, that, you know, he's going no. They don't. If they don't get any free agents that are in their primes that are blue chippers, they wait until after they're old as shit. Well, and I'm just going to say this: I expect a defensive lineman and a linebacker in free agency. I'm not going to. I can name names. Leonard Williams is a free agent. Okay, mm-hmm. he's a stud out of Seattle. Uh, I don't know uh, if we can get. Yeah, I would love to. Vita uh, Vea. I don't know if he's a free agent. Uh, I think he's v- restrictive. I want Vita. So I bad don't in care the draft. either one of them. It could be any number of guys. There's a bunch of studs. Not you know. You have to bring one in, and you need to bring in a linebacker. There, there's many linebackers out there. I, I have no faith in that in happening, here. Brian. But I'm saying if we're gonna have any shot next year, 
If not, if we don't do that, you have to supplement and add to the team better than third uh, third tier free agents. You need to go out and get two first slash second tier free agents and then draft around it. You cannot go into the draft like you've been the last two years doing this crap. And you made trades, and that's all well and good. But let's face it, Gilmore is out of a contract. Now we have to decide whether to resign him, and we got to hope that he takes a cheap contract. This is his last dip, and we'll probably get, whoever gets him this year mm-hmm. may be on the other side of him being good. You know, he's coming off a torn labrum. He's going to have surgery. It's mm-hmm. a long rehab. Who yeah. knows what you're going to get with Gilmore? Right. Um, you know, that's just a fact. So, you know, just looking at it, and I don't know how long you want to go, but just I just want to rattle off a couple things. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and I said this. We did it with mirrors, Mark. We got caught up and shout yeah, we, out to uh, we, were, we did. We did. We beat the teams that we should have beat. We were 8-1 and one against losing teams. Mm-hmm. We beat Seattle, which was on the cusp of a playoff. Okay, that yeah. was a good win. So that's nine wins. And then we were 3-4 and four against playoff teams. And you said it a little while ago when you said running. What's the common denominator? Running, running the, football. the football. Teams that could run against playoffs. us. They killed us, and we couldn't and we run went the with football. six, seven defensive backs in the playoff game against the third best running team in the National Football League. But here's the problem: surprise, but, surprise. But, yeah, it, but some of that was, you know, people are just saying that was just, you know, malpractice. It's not like we had linebackers. We didn't have anybody. Well, I mean, we were doing it with mirrors, and when our offense scored 35, 40 points, you could get away with it because teams don't have to run the ball. No. You know, it's pretty easy. We got caught up in it. Listen, but, we yeah. are so thirsty for a winner, Mark, that we were willing to tie ourselves to a wagon of a, of a flawed football team. Okay, everybody wants to throw Dak under the bus. Stop. It's all the Eagle fans who know that, let's face it, guys, he owns your ass. And I, that's just a fact. What do you care about our playoff record, Eagle fans? You, why would you care? You, <laughs> you should want us to keep Dak for long term. Yeah, I know one thing. We can win divisions because we he owns the NFC East. And well, here's going to be the problem, and this is this is where if I'm Mike McCarthy, I grow the biggest balls in the world right now. Yes, and I go up there and I just go kick the fucking door in and say, "I'm sick of this bullshit." You don't want to give me a contract? How then could fine. You not? Yeah, fine. You don't want to give me a contract? Fine. If you're going to make this my last year, at least give me what the hell I need to be successful. Then I tell you. And, and if you don't, I then fire me now. To, Just fire me now. But to no, put, too, put them on. Him put them on that. Go yeah. in there. Say, there yo, you if you guys want to win, are you worried about the bottom line? Him and Dak go, go in there and say, listen, you know. You want us to win? You need to go get us pieces. I'm not saying offensive pieces, but we need a running back, Mark. It's it's a joke at this point. We need an actual running back. We're probably <sighs> going to get Derrick Henry because now they're saying He's his old. market is about four points. Uh, our boy, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, YouTuber, he's saying like the market is about 4.3 mil a year mm-hmm. for Derrick Henry. We'll get him now. The reason why we didn't get him at the trade deadline because he had a $12 million cap hit, and we were, yeah. they were not willing to eat any of it. Mm-hmm. Mike Fisher, he was saying, Derrick Henry now, you know, looking like a cowboy because now it's like 4.3, or Josh Jacobs would be a little more expensive. Go give me Derrick Henry. Fine. Whatever. That's a hell of a lot better than, than Tony Pollard was. Uh, th- 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 but for the $10 thing- million. The, the thing Whatever that it was, was. just, 10. it was 2. a flaw. I mean, how could you, didn't I say, I, I know I said in a couple of videos, because the first couple of games, Tony Pollard had more touches than anybody else. And I said, he ain't going to last a season like that. And he is not built to go between the tackles. I love Tony Pollard. So I it's, did too. It's going to come off like I'm bashing the guy, but he was at, he, he, of course, he's going to say he can do it. He's out to get money. I don't blame him. I would be like, listen, like my dad always say, if you don't know what the hell you're doing, fake it. Fake it. Just do what you got to do to get in. And once you're in, you figure it out. Yeah, you know, That's how yeah. you're supposed to do it. So Whatever. I don't blame Tony Pollard, but I blame Stephen Jones. It all goes back to one guy. 
Okay, Will McClay, you should have left, brother. You should have left because you could go and actually do your job in its entirety. Because with yeah. the Cowboys, there's always a limit. You could do this, but you can't do that. You could do this. You know, I, I just have one question for you, Mark, and then I'm done. One question. What a qualifications does Stephen Jones have to be a general manager? I'm not talking about my daddy the, owns the, the business. The, the, he's not qualified to do the job. He's There's, not qualified if, to if, do the if job. If Jerry said, you know what, Stephen, I want to see you succeed on your own. Ain't nobody going to hire Stephen Jones. Nobody. I mean, and he he shouldn't have any involvement in football decisions. It should be Will McClay. He's your football guy. That's you know, I just yeah. don't understand why everybody is everybody that happy to work for the Cowboys that they're just gonna allow us to put out an inferior product and 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 you know, bargain base everything. You're the most that's, richest franchise. That's the thing and that kills the Yankees. Me. The Yankees will go out and spend stupid money mm -hmm. on Bad players, but at least they're playing the game and, and taking their shot. Well, here's what we can say. March 11th through 13th is the beginning of legal tampering. Let's tamper. If the Cowboys <laughs> had not made a move by April 1st, April Fool's Day, yeah, I'm then everything up. is exactly the same. Um, what's your gut tell you? What does your gut tell you about what's going to happen? You know, please, I, I feel please. like this year that the gloves are more off from people than in the past. I feel that way, too. Because, but you know, is you know, it going to penetrate their little bubble in the star? That's the thing. Is it going to penetrate? They're still seeing the money coming in. The, the thing, you know, the yeah. thing that I thought was, I thought that this is important for Jerry to win one more before it's time to take that dirt nap. Yeah. Shame on you, Stephen. And, for doing and this, this, this is father. where you start looking Sorry. and saying, you know, uh, none of this time is guaranteed. You know, there's no guarantee that, Jerry, that Jerry's going to live to 100 or anything like that that time should be of the essence while you have a quarterback because I think that they have a short memory and don't remember what it was like before Romo. And to go from Romo to Dak, that, that shit does not he happen. He had lightning in a bottle. Yeah, that he shit don't happen. And for the fans out there, because everybody keeps saying, just, just get rid of trade Dak, get rid of him, cut him, release him. And I'm kind of yeah. like... What are you talking about? Who's playing? So no, Trey Lance is going to be the one. And now I'm beginning to hear all the, you know, it's silly season, so we're getting all the crazy trades uh, things. So um, a guy from USA Today, uh, KD Drummond, he, his, yeah. his thing was hypothetical was, you know, I expect the Cowboys to do a deal with Dak, but you could maybe get Dak to waive his, waive his contract and make a trade for him to go to Chicago. It's like, why would he want to go to Chicago? And play in the cold with that team. Yeah. But yeah. trade Dak for trade Lance and their number nine pick. I was like, what? So oh, you, you go, mean Fields. I mean, Fields. yeah, for Justin Fields. And it's like, why would you think that Justin Fields is going to do better than Dak Prescott? Yeah, yeah, what is yeah. showing in his DNA that he's going to do more? And people will say, well, he's a choker in the playoffs. Well, what is Josh Allen then? I feel so bad for Dak, Mark. Because at this point, well, well, I, but no, seriously, what is Josh Allen then? He ain't winning the big one. Oh well, he's had more playoff success. But I thought if you're not winning Super Bowls, then it don't count. They're always going to count it with Josh Allen. Josh uh, Allen, you know, I, I still keep hearing the show, Justin Herbert, the so talented, but he, he hasn't won nothing. Uh, okay. He hasn't won a playoff game. Jalen Hurts, he's I was like what? Jalen Hurts, listen, I like the kid, I really do. I'm not here to bash Jalen, but he's had two. Subpar years and one really good year. So how is he any better than that? I'm just like okay. So I'm looking at this and saying, year? you know, Aaron Rodgers won one early on in his career. He ain't been winning any as far as I can tell. So, frustrating, Mark. So frustrating. Please, <sighs> we need to hold our breath that this team is going to actually. You go all in. I I rattled off our you know, free agents. I'm not going to do it tonight, but we got 16 of them. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I would say about five of them are ones you want to bring back. 
Yeah. And, and the other and, the other eleven, you should be looking to be upgrades. Yeah, and we've already said you could flip switches, you could extend contracts, digs contract. There's a lot of things you could do. Don't I don't want to hear about the salary cap. It's all BS, people. We could do because that's what the Cowboys front office wants you to believe. That yeah, they sell hope. So that we can't get under the cap. We have to be fiscally responsible because we're over the cap already. Hogwash. Please. There's a lot you could do. Don't pick and choose. Don't do that to us. That's not fair. Um, you could do a lot. Before Spend we, the money. Before Go we out get and give me a couple here. studs. Wanna, anyway, um, to be deter uh, to be continued. What's the the thing is, I don't know why people are surprised and shocked. Um, the big moves were Stefan Gilmore and Brandon Cooks. Did we honestly? And that was, and that was surprising. That was good. But did we honestly believe that that were going to be the moves that would make us a Super Bowl champion? Well, we got caught up in the hype. But this is why I, I keep going back to the free agent because now we don't have a fourth and a fifth because of those moves, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just sign a free agent and you rework some stuff and bring these studs in here, then you still have your draft picks. Mm -hmm. So it's a you got to do both, people. And please... We need to build up our offensive line and get a running back. That's what wins. That's what wins. Mm -hmm. You look at Detroit, Ragnow, center, stud, the pro bowler. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got Penny Sewell. That's why they're good. That's why they're going to go into San Francisco, and I believe they're going to win the game on Sunday. You yeah, know that would be cool. But that, but that's Ooh. just look at all the good teams. Look at San Francisco's offensive line. You know, I mean, the good teams run the ball. That's why San Francisco's good. They almost lost until what, Mark? Mm -hmm. McCaffrey broke off two runs because he there were you know, big holes yeah. and he's explosive. Yeah, that's that how they won difference. the game. Debo mm -hmm. was hurt. We can't say they passed their way because Purdy didn't have a good game. Yet everybody's coming to, to Purdy's defense. You had McCaffrey there. Oh, they but, always. Again, oh my God, they always. You know, it's, the way they were defending Josh Allen was. I'm just like that drive where he where ball. he should have had an interception. He fumbled the football. He missed like three the wide open been pass. Worse. Oh. When they fumbled through the end zone, Kansas City. That was a lock. They were going in to score another touchdown. Well, it shouldn't even have been that close. So, final thing it, before it we get ready out of here, I'll say is, looking at the cap right now, the New Orleans Saints are eighty-three million over. Yeah, we'll Dolphins see are fifty-one. I, I guarantee you'll see the Saints signing some people. I oh. guarantee you that. The Bills are fifty <laughs> over. The Chargers are forty-five, and the Broncos are twenty-three. We're sitting there at nineteen-seven. Calais Campbell's a free agent. <laughs> uh, of course. Well, was he injured now this he year? Because then we'll sign him. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. Now he is. Oh, man. Anyway, to be continued, I'm not happy. I just want people to understand, don't get caught up in Steven's BS. They have plenty of money. They need to go out. Oh. Or, or Mike, why come back? You're you're like I agree that man you. walking. It's like the Green mm -hmm. Mile. That's what I say. <laughs> he done. needs to kick the door in and say, listen, either fire me now or get me some help. One or the other. Dak, too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, Dak, too. You're going to let me play on my final year with what? A defense who's given up 27 points and I got to do. I have to do everything to win it all? Yeah. And whatever. It's and, of course, the fans say, well, you know, Dak can't put the team on his back and win. No quarterback can. No, nobody can. Nobody can Nobody do that. Can. Okay, you can't make up for a Did running you see game. Isaiah Pacheco defense. running the ball for the Chiefs. Yeah, he was running his ass off. That, they rushed for 142 yards. That helps. I even the best of quarterbacks and Patrick Mahomes. Pat so. Mahomes, I think, had what 210 yards passing. Yeah, pedestrian. I mean, you know, a great quarterback, awesome. But it was it was Pacheco that allowed <sighs> you to do that. At the end of the game, you remember the final drive. They yep. just kept running down their throat. Buffalo knew they were going to run. They ran it anyway. Do you remember that, people? That was the 90s Cowboys when everybody knew what we were yep. going to do. We did it anyway because we had a good First couple of line. quarters, we're passing the ball to get a lead. Second yep. half, Emmett Ty just yep. running it down their throats. All right, Brian. 
Um, I appreciate you, man. It's I, good, I was man. looking for you to, to make little, me feel better. A little bit. I, I, I was looking for you to make me feel nah, better. Nah, now nah, I feel nah. like we weren't. Oh, we knew this was coming. <laughs> no, don't expect me to make you feel better. <laughs> I am going to go post. I, I, I heard. I heard the craziest thing today was actually Richard Sherman was defending Dak Prescott. Wow! And he wow. was basically saying, he said, "You don't seem to realize that Dak Prescott is the prototypical quarterback that they draft now." He said, if you look at Trey Lance, Trey Lance is like a Dak Prescott. He said, even mm. Josh Allen is like a Dak Prescott. He said, you need to give the man more credit than what you do. He said, you can't expect him to make up for all of the deficits that are on the team. And I was just like, was this Richard Sherman? Has, you know, aliens taken over his body or something? Because I can't believe he's actually saying that. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, everybody, definitely check out my main man, Game Day Brian, and thank your mail. But what did I say? Game Day. Did I say game? Oh, God. Uh, game, game Time. time. There game are no time. more game days for the Cowboys. Game Time, Brian. As always, I appreciate you. Make sure you, you sub it. up and everything else. And thank your mailman because when it's been cold as shit outside, when it's